Hi, and welcome to Virtual Administrator's ongoing series on Intel vPro and how to uh, use vPro to help you run your business better. Today we're going to talk about how to configure vPro on a Lenovo uh, Think Center M90P. Uh, this is going to be specific to the Lenovo, but I think what you're going to find is that a lot of the settings, while they might be slightly different either on other models or, or either other even ma manufacturers, the basic information is going to be here that's going to help you get Intel um, vPro set up and running on your machine. So in this webinar, we're going to talk about how to enable the vPro in the BIOS. It has to be set up ahead of time. Uh, how to uh, access some of the vPro settings inside the BIOS and then basically how to configure vPro so that it's ready to be used by your RMM tool. So there's a few things that you need to know ahead of time. Uh, it's best to get these things ready. Uh, you need to obviously have the machine name. It is important to have the exact machine name, uh, the exact spelling of the name of the machine that you're going to use uh, because we're going to need that. Um, it does use a domain information. This is going to be uh, basically, I guess, what you would maybe call fully qualified domain it, 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 You know, with the dot HQ after your domain name. It's not the NetBIOS domain name. Uh, you're going to need to make up a password. And this has to be a complex password. So at least eight character password, uppercase letter, a symbol, and a number. And please write this down or, or you know, use something that you're not going to forget. Because once you have it set, it's uh, pretty much impossible or near impossible to, uh, to reset everything. Uh, you're probably going to find that you're going to want to set this password to be the same for not only all your machines at one client site, but all your machines in general, uh, just so as you use your tool, you're not going to have to keep track of all these different um, passwords. So pick one now. All right. So much of this demo is going to be live, uh, so bear with us. Uh, trying to do uh, screen captures and whatnot on a machine that uh, is not yet enabled is a little challenging. But we're gonna. First thing I'm going to do is I want to talk about enabling vPro in the BIOS. Uh, we're using a utility called um, Effin. EpiPan, EpiFan, to um, capture the the settings here. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and power up the uh, the Lenovo. And as soon as it starts booting up here, I want to hit the enter key one time and, and wait for the BIOS menu. And then we're going to press F1. Okay, so we're going to press F1 to get into the BIOS settings. So what we need to do in, in the main BIOS is basically we just need to enable the vPro settings. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to go over to the advanced tab. You're going to go down to the Intel AMT. Okay. And you're basically just going to check and make sure that the that the Intel AMT control is enabled, and the uh, press Control P to enter MEBX is enabled. Okay, you need both of those things enabled in order to continue. All right. Once that's saved, you're going to press F10 to save save your changes, and hit Enter, and it's going to reboot again. Now this time, what's going to happen is you're going to press Enter to, to wait for the, the screen to come up, but you're going to press Control-P to get into the settings. Okay, once you've successfully pressed Control-P, you are going to get into this uh, management BIOS extension. And what you're going to want to do is press 1 to enter the configuration screen. All right. When you get into the configuration screen, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to ask you to ch um, check your password. The initial password is admin in lowercase. So you're just going to type in ADMIN. You're going to hit enter. And now it wants you to put that complex password that you wanted to put in there. So type in your password, making sure you don't screw up. And then you're going to have to verify it again. And now you're in. All right, so now the fun begins. Uh, we're going to go in and we're going to uh, begin by going into the ME general settings. Just hit enter. And it's going to read everything. And what you need to do is scroll all the way to the bottom. And we're looking for something called power control. And select power control. 
and we're basically going to check and make sure that the uh, system is listening for vPro. So we're going to hit enter again on the ME host is on. And we're going to set this to be desktop, on in S0, ME wake in S3 and S4. Okay, so we're basically saying, hey, it's always on. All right, and we're going to go back. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to network setup. We need to tell it how to um, access the machine and IP and host names and all that. So we're going to select the Intel network settings. We're going to go to host name. And we're going to type in the host name of the computer. Um, in this case, the host name is JEN Change Me. Okay, so we're just going to hit enter. Now we select the domain name, and you need to put in like your fully qualified domain name, uh, something like in, you know for us it would be like NetworkDepot.hq, right? So whatever that name is, like on your small business server, or your your domain controller. All right. Next thing we're going to do is go back. And we're going to go down to IP settings. And we're going to select the wired IP configuration. And we're going to sec select DHCP mode. And we're going to make sure that that is enabled, because we want it to be DHCP. And we're going to go previous menu, previous menu again to back up, and previous menu again to go all the way up. Next, we're going to go and we're going to activate the network access. So we click on that, say yes, and it's and it's basically uh, configured the access for you. All right, scroll up until you find password policy. Select the password policy and make sure that it's set to uh, be turned on and accessed anytime. All right. Then we're going to go down and we're going to do with, just check to see what's called the PRTC. All right, this is the protected real time clock. And all, normally you don't need to change anything. You just want to make sure it's in this specific format on your machine, the year, the month, the day, hour, minute, second. As long as it's set up exactly like that, you can just hit enter and you don't need to enter anything. All right, and then what we're going to do is go to previous menu. And we're then going to go down and talk about the AMT configuration. All right, so as it's updating the settings in the general setting menu, Hit enter, and then we're going to select this SOL IDER. Okay, that's serial over LAN, and it's an IDE redirect. So we're going to click that once. We're going to select username and password. Make sure that's enabled. Then we're going to go down to the SOL. Make sure that's enabled. Go down to the IDER. Make sure that's enabled. And go down to legacy redirection mode. Hit enter, and make sure that that is enabled as well. Okay, and then we hit previous menu. Then we go to KVM configuration. Select the feature selection. Make sure it's enabled. Go down to the user opt-in. All right, now this is a this can uh, you have you have some choices here, but I think for most people, unless you want to make sure that your client you only want to access the machine when the client's there, you want to select the option that allows you to the, saying that basically consent is not required. Okay? And if you saw that, you want to make sure that consent is not required for the KVN session. Otherwise your user is going to have to give you a code to type in. So in most cases that needs to be changed. All right, and then we're going to, oops, I already selected that. We're going to go back to the um, opt-in configuration from remote IT. And again, you want to make sure that that is enabled. And then we're back and out. Previous menu again. Previous menu again. And then we're going to hit exit. And say yes, we're sure we want to exit. And you're done. That uh, completes all the steps necessary. Uh, it, it may look a little complicated, but I think you'll find after you do your first few that you'll be able to fly through it pretty quickly. Probably a good idea to set up a checklist just to make sure you don't miss anything. But basically, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, and let us know if you have any questions. Thanks for listening.